if you know exactly what you want to be, you need to spend as much time with people that are actually that already. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true, and the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. Do something you're very passionate about, and don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. It's uh, very rewarding when you work on something you think is gonna make a big difference. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit harder, but I think, uh, I think the passion that one might bring with it uh, brings so much more energy to that that you're more likely to succeed. You have to have an emotional investment in what you're doing. If you don't love what you're doing, um, Failure is pretty much guaranteed. Success is not guaranteed by any means, but failure is m much more likely if you don't love what you're doing. You know, one of the things that I do is I question a lot of things. Um, and you can do that in a good way and in a bad way, but hopefully if you try to get people to motivate why they're doing something and their way of thinking, you know, the worst thing you can end up with is a situation where um, you get told, well, this is the way it's always been. That's the worst ever, that's a non-answer. Instead, ask yourself, you know, given everything we have today, is there a way we can make this better? For somebody aspiring to, you know, take things to the next level or to even surpass their wildest dreams, there's always gonna have to be an element of luck, but I think more important is putting yourself in a business that can be ubiquitous, that, that, can, that really doesn't have limits because otherwise there's always going to be a grind to it but if, if the business if, if if it can't be something that you can visualize every business using or every consumer using it's going to be tough to scale to be big enough or to have the perceived value you want an idea about what you can say i know it sounds like a bad idea but here's specifically why it's actually a great one you want to sound crazy but you want to actually be right because when you're trying to differentiate when you're trying to do something different there's going to be that gut moment, that gut sense. Is this right? Is this not right? If you're not, if you're not having doubt, you're not pushing the boundaries far enough. Don't think about how do I get really, how do I get big fast? That will happen if you actually build something super meaningful and super important. So don't think about, you know, what is the quickest way to success? Think about what is the best way to building something important that the world really needs. One of the things I advise entrepreneurs to do is when you have an idea, so a classic entrepreneurial impulse is to hold the idea close to you and not go tell people because, oh, the idea is so special. Right. That's almost always a mistake. Mm -hmm. Go talk to Why every, is that a mistake? Yeah. It's a mistake because your actual real competitive advantage is not that you have this idea that you have locked away in your closet, which may or may not be accurate and you have no idea which it is. Uh, your, your actual competitive advantage is if you're assembling the intelligence around does this idea work, what is the right team, mm. what is the right learnings, and we're essentially in motion. The hardest thing to do is start. Um, you have all these ideas and everyone has an idea, but it's really about executing the idea and building the idea and attracting other people to help you work on the idea. That is the biggest challenge, but the, the way to begin is to get the idea out of your head, draw it out, you know, um, talk about it, program it if you're a programmer, or make it if you're building something. Like, you don't have to be the best, but you have to be dangerous, right? You have to learn just enough to be dangerous to build an idea, concept it, and show it to the world. And then it turns out there are lots of other people, including all 170 employees that work at Instagram, who are much better at doing all that stuff than I am. But you need to find people who can, you know, be drawn to the idea that you build, and, and then they end up taking it and, um, and making it even better. Don't necessarily think that you have to have the home run and the huge Apple computer on your first start. I spent a long time in my life with skills just building little devices for fun. 
for fun is one of the key things because that drives you to think and think and think and make it better and better and better than you ever would if you're doing it for a company. Build things at first for yourself that you would want. And there are a lot of people from whom we can learn a lot. And I think like, you know, the one piece of advice is like, don't underestimate anyone you come across. Ever. Right. Like whether they're, you know, uh, a, a blue collar worker waiting for the bus or they're, you know, helping you at your, they're the server or bartender at the restaurant or they're a lower ranking employee. I mean, the smartest leaders I've ever seen have always gone around the room and asked for everybody's opinion. Most startups that fail do it ultimately because they did not make something that people wanted. They made something that, um, you know, that they thought people would want, um, but they were either in denial about it, about, you know, whether it was actually any good, um, or somebody else came along and made something that people wanted even more. <laughs> and so it's not just about doing focus groups, it's not just about, you know, double checking your vision, it really is about integrating this concept of testing our ideas rigorously throughout the product development process, throughout the marketing process, even as we scale up. But what you really need to do is think about what is the smallest possible test that I can run for this idea, for this concept, for this theory, get it out there and get customers using it. Because your customers are gonna be the ones to tell you if it's really working or not. What this all comes down to is doing something exceptional for your users, whether it's in community, whether it's in connection, or whether it's in design. This is our big advantage as a startup, is that we can actually get away with doing this. We can make this the core part of why we're doing business. I do think that one thing that's important is, especially if you're a founder or a technical founder, is to realize that you can't do everything, and even if you can, you shouldn't. You should find a great partner, no matter what it is that you're doing, um, and you should look for someone who is very high intelligence, uh, very high energy, and very high integrity. And you need all three of those, you can't compromise on any one of them. Otherwise you'll end up with uh, either someone who's not smart, which does you no good, or someone who's not hardworking, which also does you no good, or the worst case is you end up with a smart, hardworking crook who ends up working against your interests. And uh, integrity is something that takes a lot of time spent with someone to figure out. When you know, a lot of corporations have, they might call them core values or guiding principles or so on, but the problem is usually they're very lofty sounding. They kind of read like a press release the marketing department put out. Uh, they sound just like their competitors and maybe you learn about it on day one of your job but then it becomes this meaningless plaque on the lobby wall. Well, we wanted to come up with committable core values and by committable, meaning we're willing to hire or fire people based on those values, uh, completely independent of their actual job performance. The definition of values is they're the behaviors or principles that you religiously adhere to within your company. When I say religious, I mean that no amount of data will sway you in, from, from, um, from those principles. And the degree to which that you have the courage to um, maintain your conviction around those ideas is the degree to which you're going to be successful over the long term. A company is simply a group of people um, and uh, as a leader of people uh, you have to be a great listener, um, you have to be a great motivator, uh, you have to uh, be very good at praising and looking for the best in people. Um, you know, People are no different from, from flowers, if you water flowers they flourish, if you um, praise people they flourish and, um, and that's a critical attribute of, um, of a leader. Um. So I kind of like half jokingly with, with a lot of people say that, you know, my job is basically like to be, to be the assistant for the rest of the company. Like my job is to, to make sure that like you have what you need, um, that it's, and, and basically you have everything you need to kick ass. Like that's my job. If you don't have that, then let me know because I'm not doing my job. You know, there are a lot of things that are outside of your control. Uh, a lot of external circumstances will depend, like determine the success of your idea, whether you know, the market timing is right for this new kind of service, um, or whether uh, people, you know, whether a customer, like the economy is right for, for, for your kind of service, right? Whether um, you meet the right people who will finance your company. Um, many, many external circumstances are like outside of your control and like, but will affect the outcome. And you, know, you have to like be okay with that. When it comes to changing the world, what I learned from Steve Jobs is if you believe in a Macintosh, if you believe in iPhone, iPod, iPad, if you believe enough, then you will see it because other people will believe in it. Other people will create software. Other people will create products. So you need to foster the belief in what you are dreaming so that it becomes a reality. 
which is very different than saying, I don't expect anybody to believe it until I see it. You need people to believe it before they can see it. So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn, and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. If you don't love it, you won't make it through the long period of pain that is inevitable. So uh, make sure that you take care of yourself during the process, make sure that you take care of uh, your mental health, your physical health while you're doing it because it's a long road.